We live in a universe filled with light. At least that's what it looks like when we gaze into the sky. But scientists are now sure there is far more matter in this universe than we can see. We know this dark matter must exist because we can detect the pull of its gravity. What's going on in this hidden world? Could it have formed its own dark stars, planets, and maybe even life forms? And could this shadow universe pose a threat to our world of light? On summer nights, my friends and I used to play with sparklers. Their flickering lights were so bright in the darkness, everything around them seemed to disappear. It was easy to forget their every move was controlled by an invisible hand. An invisible hand also guides the movement of our universe. Astronomers are sure a vast cosmic ocean of unseeable matter is pulling stars off their expected courses. Discovering the true nature of this unknown matter has become the most pressing question in cosmology, perhaps in all of physics. Experimental physicist Raphael Lang from Purdue University is one of many scientists trying to capture and study dark matter. We really know all this dark matter exists. We have no clue what it's made out of, but we know it's there. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find out what is it made out of. It's a huge challenge because we only feel the feeble pull of dark matter's gravity. Its particles pass right through the matter that we are made of. So, it's a bit like trying to catch a fish with your hands. So you can try to catch fish with your hands. And, well, that, that's not going to work. The fish is just too, way too fast and too slippery. You're never going to catch a fish with your hands. So you need different tools. To catch dark matter, Raphael needs something that can interact with it directly. The one thing we do know is that dark matter has mass the particles we know get their mass from the Higgs boson. If you can interact with the Higgs boson, then you have mass. Higgs boson particles create an invisible force field that fills the universe. We believe everything in our universe gets mass by interacting with this Higgs field. So isn't it natural to think that maybe the dark matter gets its mass also from the Higgs boson? If that's the case, that would be great because maybe then we can talk to the dark matter through the Higgs boson channel. If dark matter does get its mass from Higgs bosons, Raphael may be able to use them as tools to interact with dark matter. And it would also make his fishing trip a little easier. Maybe the Higgs boson can act as a tool, like a fishing rod, that helps us to catch the dark matter. So on one end, we are, and we talk to the Higgs boson, and the Higgs boson on the other end talks to the dark matter. But as any good fisherman knows, just because you have the right tools doesn't mean you're guaranteed to catch a fish. Raphael is working on an underground detector in Italy called Xenon 100. It uses a large vat filled with 100 kilos of ultra-pure and highly inert liquid xenon. Liquid xenon is very dense, so the atomic nuclei there are really densely packed, which is great because it gives the dark matter a lot of uh, stuff to interact with. So let's take some dark matter and let's drop it in the liquid xenon and let's see what happens. As it falls in, it will go through most of the liquid xenon without interacting, but maybe we are lucky and one of the xenon atoms, it kicks the nucleus. That xenon nucleus races out of the tank at high speed, leaving a trail of light in its wake. We don't really observe the dark matter itself. What we do is we observe the nucleus flying through the xenon. The team at the Xenon 100 detector has been running the experiment since 2008. So far, it has not seen any sign of dark matter. But Raphael believes an improved, bigger detector, the Xenon 1 ton, has a good chance of grasping this elusive particle. 
So a Xenon 1 ton will be 100 times more powerful than anything that we have today. What that means is that we can do something that would take us a whole year to wait and catch those particles. We could do that in a couple of days. If Raphael is correct, we may soon have our first glimpse of dark matter. But there might be another way for us to find it. Not by catching dark matter, but by creating it. John Butterworth is a leading experimental physicist at the University College London and at the LHC in Geneva. This colossal machine famously created the Higgs boson in 2012. It has also created every other particle of matter that we know to exist. Together, they make up the standard model of particles. The standard model is our best understanding of what we call fundamental particles, and they're the stuff that everything else in the universe is made of. But when I said that everything in the universe is made up of these fundamental particles, the big exception is dark matter probably isn't, as far as we can tell. Particle physicists like John, however, have one idea for what these dark matter particles might be. But it's an idea that requires you to spin reality on its head. I'm on the London Eye, and it's a good place to talk about angular momentum. Angular momentum is, is what you get when you multiply the speed of something that's going round with the distance to the axle that it's going round. Fundamental particles also have angular momentum, which physicists call spin. There are two types of particles, matter particles, all the tangible stuff in the universe, and force particles that carry pure energy. These two types spin at different rates. Imagine John is a particle, and he's spinning around the London eye. If he's a force particle, he'll spin at one rate. If he's a matter particle, he'll have only half that spin. But some physicists think all the particles of force and matter may have hidden counterparts that spin differently. So given that all the force carriers have got spin one and all the matter particles have got spin half, it's quite a natural question to ask, what if I swap them over? What if I made all the force carriers have spin half? These differently spinning versions of force particles would, in fact, be matter. The photon would have a matter version called the photino. The force particle John would have a matter particle called Janino. So you would get a lot of these produced in the Big Bang. They would hang around in the universe, but they'd do nothing else. And that's essentially a description of dark matter. That's what dark matter does. John has been scouring the many Big Bangs created by the LHC, looking for matter versions of force particles like the photino. But John is beginning to worry because so far, he's seen nothing. We've not found any direct evidence for these other half of the particles. Now, there's still a chance, but there's a lot less chance, I would say, than there used to be. 